Data cleaning, or as it sometimes is called, data wrangling with Excel is a fundamental skill that you need to master if you want to take your Excel data analysis game to the next level. This is going to be the first video in a series of tutorials that will teach you the techniques to take raw data in Excel and to clean it and to transform it, to wrangle it into a format that is suitable for more advanced analytics techniques like the kinds of techniques I teach on this channel. So the subject of this video is Excel's if function. And it wouldn't surprise me if you're thinking, geez, Dave, the Excel if function, big whoop de doo Hold on, this tutorial series is gonna get a lot more interesting real quick, but we have to start somewhere. And where we start is with the mighty if function. So I'm in Excel. And by the way, if you're interested in getting this particular workbook that you see here on the screen, you can check the description below the video. There'll be a link to a GitHub repository where you can download this particular spreadsheet. In this series, like I do in my other tutorials on my channel, I am going to use the famous Titanic machine learning data set. Don't worry about the machine learning aspect of it. Just think of this as like a customer data data set. It's pretty close. And what we're gonna do is we're going to clean the data. We're gonna wrangle the data throughout this series to empower you to do the types of analyses that I teach on other tutorials in my channel here. We've got the data. And essentially each row in the data represents a passenger on the Titanic. So for example, this row right here is Mr. Owen Harris Brand. He was a third class passenger. That's what this column P class means. And the number three designates that he was in third class. And then the survived column here is whether or not the passenger survived. Unfortunately, Mr. Brand here did not make it. Now, this column right here of survived is something that you commonly see in lots of data, which is we represent true and false as numbers. So in this particular case, zero means false. Did Mr. Brand survive zero or false? No, he did not. Whereas Mrs. John Bradley Cummings here, she got a one on her survive, which means she did survive. This is where we're going to start with this particular column right here. Because even though zeros and ones work just fine, oftentimes when we're doing analyses, it, it behooves us to transform, to clean, to wrangle the data into a format that is more amenable to human consumption. And zeros and ones typically don't work for most people. If you know a lot about computer programming, you're totally cool with zeros and ones, but most people are not. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this data. We're gonna wrangle it into a new column on the table called new survived. And what we're going to do is transform these values from zeros and ones into the strings survived and perished. Let me show you how you do that. So first up, let's go ahead and scroll over here. And we're gonna to go to the M column right up here, which you can see. And we're gonna put a new column in this table called new survived. And just to make things easier, I'm gonna hide these other columns just so you can see everything because we don't really care about these columns right now for this video. We will be using those later, trust me. So we got new survived right here. So we're going to use Excel's if function to wrangle this data, to clean it, to transform it. So not surprisingly, we're just gonna type in equals. This tells Excel that we're going to give it some code to execute. In this particular case, we're gonna use the code to call Excel's if function. And what if does, it allows you to check other values that's going on in your worksheet and then do something as a result of that check. This is what's known as a logical condition, but you can just think of it as like some sort of check. And let me show you what I mean. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna use the if function and we're going to test, we're going to check if the value in column B is greater than zero. Because if it is, that means the passenger survived. So what we can do is we can say, hey, Excel, go check B2. And notice that it gets highlighted here. Is B2 greater than zero? So this part right here, the B2 greater than zero is our logical test. It is the check. So the if function says, cool, if the condition is met, if the logical test, if the check is fulfilled, what do I do? Well, we want to have survived put in instead of what we had before, which was zeros and ones. Excel says, okay, cool, great. What do you want me to do in the case when the check doesn't pass? If the logical test fails, put in perished instead. And then we close that off. So this is a function call here, right? If you're not familiar, we're using the if function. We put everything within parentheses and then we tell Excel how we want the function to operate. Hey Excel, execute the if function. Here's my check. 
Go look at B2 and see if it's greater than zero. If it is, put in the string survived in the cell, otherwise put in perished. So all we need to do now is hit enter and we get this nice autofill capability and it just goes all the way down. It fills the cells as a result of our logical condition. And we can see here perished and survived. Awesome. So this is great. We have now transformed, we have wrangled, we have cleaned the data from the original zeros and ones into a format that's more amenable for human consumption, more amenable for analysis. But we don't want to stop there. We want to actually also transform, we want to clean, we want to wrangle P class because once again, it's numbers. And generally speaking, if you don't format data in quite the right way, sometimes unexpected consequences happen. So for example, I know that P class represents first and second and third class passengers, even though these are numbers. However, if you weren't familiar with the data, if you saw numbers, you might just assume that this is actually a column of numeric values that you can do math on. And you can't do math on whether or not you're in first class, second class, or third class. That doesn't make any sense. So what we'll do is we will transform it. We will clean and wrangle the data so we can make it explicit that these things are in fact actually really not numbers. They are labels. They are strings. They're categories. So what we'll do is we'll add a new column called new P class, not surprisingly. And what we're going to do now is use the if function again to wrangle the data, to clean it. And then we're gonna get a little bit more complicated now because before with the survived column, it was pretty easy, right? We only had two options. Either the passenger survived or they didn't, pretty easy. Here we've got three things. You're either in first class, second class, or third class. So we need a more complicated if function call to Excel to make this work. So here's how you do it. So we're gonna start with if again. And this time we're gonna look at the C column, that's the P class, so let's look at C2. And we're gonna say, hey, if C2 is equal to one, that's what we're checking for. And then we say, hey, Excel, if it is equal to one, go ahead and put the string first class in there, or just first. Okay, that works great. To take care of the last two pieces, what we do is we embed an if function call within the first if function call. That allows us then to then check the remaining two values. And let me show you what I mean by that. So we do comma, and now we say if again. This is totally legit. Excel is totally fine with doing this. And in fact, you will see this over and over again in many workbooks where you'll see lots of embedded if function calls. So now we're gonna say, hey, if C2 is equal to two, put in second for second class. And then lastly, we say, well, if it's not first class and it's not second class, what's left? Well, it's third class. So we just put in third. And then we just put in two parentheses, right? Because we have two open parentheses here in our code, one here and one here. So we put two closing parentheses in and we're good to go. And when I hit enter, boom, look at that. Look at the beauty in that. I'm gonna go ahead and unhide all these guys right here. And just to show you what's going on, just to show you what's so awesome about this, Let's just go ahead and scroll over and I'm gonna insert a pivot table. I'm gonna insert a pivot table now that we can use those cleaned columns of data, those wrangled columns of data, we can do some cool pivoting. So I'm just gonna insert a pivot table. I'm gonna put it in the same worksheet and I'm gonna put it over here in P2, I think, right here, click okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and scroll over a little bit more so you can see what's going on. So the first thing we can do is let's use our new P class column of data here. And I'll just go ahead and drag this down to the rows of the pivot table. And you can't see it because my face is blocking it, but it's in the rows, as you can see right here. So I got first class, second class, third class. Already, this is way more intelligible than using one, two, and three. Okay. And now we can say, cool, let's go ahead and drag new survived to our columns. Awesome, so now I can see perished and survived. And then if I drag new survived down to the values, and now what I can do is go ahead and click on that in the values section, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the count, I'm gonna change the summary function here from count to percentage of row total. Boom, and look at that. Now, this is so much more better, right? Look at this. First class passengers survived as a group 62.96% of the time. Notice how much easier this is to understand what's going on. But it gets even better, right? Because what I can do is I can go over here and I can drag sex down to the rows. Ooh, look at that. Look at these, look at that. So first class females, second class females, overwhelmingly survive, 92.11%, 96.81%. This is the first video in the series. We've cleaned and wrangled two columns of data using the mighty if 
function. And already we're seeing the benefits of our work in terms of quickly and easily seeing what's going on in the data and start to understand what's happening with these folks on the Titanic. If you're interested in upping your data analysis game with Excel, I'm gonna put a couple more videos on my channel here and here for you to take a look at. That's it for this particular video, the mighty if function in action to help you clean and wrangle your data in Excel. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.